Hello, everyone. This is Sirius Trivia, and welcome back to another episode of the Zhuge Liang Northern Expedition lore series as we continue with episode 15, titled Sima Yi's Lesson. Now, in our last episode, we covered Li Yan's backstory in order to explain how the 4th Northern Expedition ended for the Shuhan side, and for this episode, we'll be covering how things went for the Wei side. So winding back the clock to the aftermath of the Battle of Lucheng, Sima Yi, who clearly suffered a crushing defeat in the field, ended up retreating his forces back towards Shangbang as the Wei forces now dug in defensively. Now, I personally don't think the casualty numbers were as high as the 3,000 confirmed kills on units wearing elite armor or mid-tier officers, as that level of casualty would have implied a complete rout. And we know for a fact that Sima Yi was able to regroup his forces and hold out defensively for at least another month while dealing with a lack of supplies. And just as hope was dwindling for the Wei side, the Shu Han forces suddenly started to voluntarily pull back. Now this unprovoked retreat clearly could be a trap. But after some cautious scouting, Sima Yi concluded that the Shu Han army had also ran out of supplies. So hoping to seize this opportunity, and hoping to score at least one victory in this campaign, Sima Yi ordered Zhang He to give chase. Now at this time, Zhang He vehemently argued against this decision, citing the art of war that one should not pursue an organized retreat. But Sima Yi, as the commander of the army, outranked Zhang He, thus unable to disobey his superior, Zhang He rode out for the final act of his life, as much like Zhang He had predicted, Zhuge Liang had already planned an ambush at a narrow mountain pass called Mumen, situated right between Shangbang and Lucheng, where thousands of crossbowmen lay in waiting. And just as Zhang He and his men entered this narrow path, the crossbowmen fired, and Zhang He was immediately struck in his right knee, as his horse took the bulk of the bolts for him. But now impaired and without a horse, Zhang He would soon perish alongside most of his troops, as the 4th Northern Expedition finally draws to a close, just as the final general of Cao Cao's famed five elites in Zhang He dies. Now there are plenty of conspiracy theories around this pursuit, as many believe that Sima Yi sent Zhang He on this chase, knowing full well that he will likely run into an ambush and most likely die. Well, I think this is a reasonable assessment given that Zhang He had originally been the Wei court's initial replacement for Cao Zhen out west before Sima Yi was finally selected as the court and Emperor Cao Rui decided to shift most of their defensive focus towards Shu Han, especially as Sun Quan continued to make a fool of himself at Hefei. Then after Sima Yi arrived out west, he and Zhang He repeatedly butted heads on military strategies, which would be typically quite normal. But given that Sima Yi's final decisions repeatedly resulted in heavy losses due to his lack of experience out west and underestimation of Zhuge Liang initially, it only further antagonized the relationship between Zhang He and Sima Yi, so it would be logical for Sima Yi to send Zhang He to his death here as a means to eliminate this potential competitor in the future once this campaign was over. But if we are to throw away all the conjectures and only focus on the facts, it can also be argued that after the main army took such heavy losses in the aftermath of the Battle of Lucheng, only Zhang He's unit, which fought Wang Ping to a draw outside of Mount Xi Castle at the time, was the only one now capable of giving chase, as it was the most intact unit available. Now, regardless of the reason, at the end of the day, Zhang He's death at Mumen would be the final chapter of the 4th Northern Expedition, and Sima Yi would come away from this experience with such a lofty impression of Zhuge Liang and the threat of the Shu Han expeditions that he would make multiple recommendations to the Wei court in order to give himself a better chance next time. First, he asked his brother, Sima Fu, who was serving in the imperial court at this time, 
to reassign 5,000 families living on Tuntian farms in the Ji province in central China and move them all the way to Shangbang, as Sima Yi did not want to run out of food again like this time, and the 5,000 families can provide plenty of emergency conscripts in times of war. Second, he would ask Emperor Cao Rui to move 20,000 troops from the Central Army near the capital to Chang'an, as he felt they needed more experienced reserve troops in order to deal with Zhuge Liang. Third, Sima Yi would start multiple development projects out west, ranging from cultivating new farmlands, constructing new levees and dams to aid agriculture, surveying for new salt and iron mines, and scheduling the troops for improved drilling during the winter month when they were not needed at the farms. And after seeing all the casualties suffered during the 4th Northern Expedition, Emperor Cao Rui and the entire Wei court would also relent as they would end up approving all of Sima Yi's demands, and despite essentially suffering three straight defeats, just because he was able to outlast Zhuge Liang and eventually see a Shu Han retreat, Sima Yi was still given a small title promotion in late July of 231 for his overall performance in this campaign. At the same time, on the other side, Zhuge Liang went back to the drawing boards as he lamented on yet another fruitless northern expedition as doubt surely started to surface in his mind. Perhaps it was true, the heavens no longer favored the Han, as unlike Han Xin's strike out of Hanzhong more than 400 years ago to help establish the Han dynasty, his own path would be so much harder. At that time, Han Xin had several advantages. First, the enemy he was facing were much weaker and disjointed and disorganized. But most importantly, the Chen Cang path at that time was very different from the Chen Cang path Zhuge Liang took during the Second Northern Expedition. At that time, the Chen Cang path had a river that ran through its entire course that offered a safe and reliable supply line for the Han armies. But an earthquake during Han Wudi's reign, roughly 300 years ago, ended up destroying this waterway. So while Han Xin was able to sneak out of the Chen Cang path and then maintain a reliable supply line, Zhuge Liang now no longer had that luxury. So hoping to create a similar situation for himself for the 5th Northern Expedition, Zhuge Liang decided on the Baoxie Path, which does have the Bao and Xie rivers running through its full course, which is why the name Baoxie Path. But unfortunately, the rapids in these two rivers had made them unsuitable for supply transport, which is why for the next two years, Zhuge Liang would experiment and eventually invent a raft that was nicknamed Liu Ma, or the floating horse, that was capable of withstanding these rapids. And aside from these steps, Zhuge Liang continued to stockpile food and supplies for the next two years, as a huge supply depot was constructed within the Baoxie path itself. And it goes without saying that the drilling of the Shu Han army also continued during the fall and winter month, when the troops were not needed out in the fields. And an interesting side note is that during these two years, Zhuge Liang also invited a famed Shu blacksmith named Pu Yuan to come to the Baoxie path, where according to later accounts of Jiang Wei, 3,000 special blades were crafted that were capable of slicing through bamboo filled with metal balls in one clean swing. So from the end of the 4th Northern Expedition in July of 231, Till early spring of 234, both sides made their preparations as the fifth and final northern expedition under Zhuge Liang will become the largest expedition ever launched by the Kingdom of Shu Han, and it will become Zhuge Liang's final chapter in the Three Kingdoms lore. And with that, our episode here comes to an end, as we'll continue next time to cover the fifth northern expedition. So hopefully you all have enjoyed this episode enough to hit that like button to help out the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!